Hey, hello. My name is Selena. And my name's Theoni, and you are listening to Piping Hot. Hello, hello, everyone. Happy June. Um, it's crazy that it's already June. I know that doesn't really make sense to yeah. me. And the fact that I'm I've been like planning this trip back to Minnesota for mm-hmm. like months. And the fact that I'm flying out tomorrow, like yeah. by the time this episode comes out, I'll have been in Minnesota for like a week, yeah. which blows my mind, honestly. Yeah, that's crazy. You know what it also made me think of, too, is that mm-hmm. we've been doing this podcast for almost half a year now. Isn't that Shut weird? up. Right? Isn't that so weird? There's no way it's been that long. That's crazy. Yeah. And I think we only had like one week where we took a break, but like every week we've had an episode. Isn't that weird? Wow. It does not feel like it's been that long. Yeah. That's crazy. Wow. I Look know. at us go. I know. We're, we're amazing. I know. Look at us. I'm very proud of us. Yeah. And look at us sporting a cute ponytail today. I know. I noticed that. We both actually look really good today. I I'm, I'm proud of us. Because amazing. some days I get on here and I'm like, I look like I just rolled out of bed and <laughs> it's just going to have to be what it's going to be. And yeah. some days I'm like, wow, I feel pretty good. Yes. <laughs> How was your week, dude? It's good. It's yeah no it's good it's starting to get really nice here in minnesota so spending some time outside which has been really nice um work is like kind of busy so that's not ideal but it's fine (laughs) (laughs) um but yeah no it's good i'm like so excited for summer so i I really want to like get out and do more things so but yeah what about you it's good i think I am ready to go back to Minnesota like I was saying a little bit ago just because I think now that I've had time off after school Mm -hmm. and everything like that I've gotten a chance to catch up on the things that I wanted to and so now I'm just like ready to go home spend time with people and then get into work I feel like I'm ready for that now which is weird but I also feel like you can only do so much with so much free time like eventually I'm like okay I need to do something with myself yeah that's the same way that I am with things like vacation I love vacation right like I Hmm. will I'm like so obsessed with it but a part (laughs) of me is like at the point where it's like okay well I'm done with vacation I can like kind of get back into routine and stuff Mm -hmm. so 100 percent What are you drinking today? I am drinking stress relief with a bit of honey in it Mm. because my throat was kind of hurting today, honestly. I don't know if I have been singing too much in the car or (laughs) talking too much or like what's going on, but I just feel like I needed something to soothe the old vocal cords. So, and I want to get like a good night's rest tonight because last night I couldn't sleep because I'm pretty sure there was a mouse scurrying around in my room. No. I didn't see it, but I feel like I heard it. Ooh. So I was just, it was just hard to sleep with that. Yeah. So now I'm just like, I'm going to pack tonight so it's ready to go for tomorrow. And then I'm going to pass out. Like, I'm very excited for yeah. that. <laughs> uh, I should know this, but like, when are you landing in Minnesota? Like, what time? 6 45 p.m. My mom's going to pick me up and then nice. we might go have dinner with my yaya and then we'll go to Rochester. Nice. And what time yeah. are you flying out of Boston? 4 45 or something like that. Oh, wow. So you have kind of like the day tomorrow. Yeah, which okay. I'm very happy about because I'm yeah. going to sleep in and if I have everything packed tonight, then I can just kind of take my time tomorrow, which I am nice. very excited about. So. Yeah. No, I hate like rushing to get to the airport, hate rushing to pack. Like it just gives me so much anxiety. No, I don't do <laughs> rushing. I don't do rushing in the morning. I just hate that. And like I also hate cramming a bunch of stuff in yeah. for like the last minute. Like I'm not dealing with that. Yeah, so. no. What are you drinking? I am drinking peach Bellini today. (laughs) Every time I hear that, even if you're saying it right now, it just makes me laugh. (laughs) Yeah, I'm I'm drinking that today, just feeling for like a summer vibe. Do you want to know a funny story? Yes, I do. So I was FaceTiming my sisters Mm -hmm. and my older sister was like, um do you guys have a p.o box for your podcast i was like no no we don't like we don't do that (laughs) she's like well you guys should get one because i want to send you guys new tea because every single week it's stress relief or peppermint (laughs) or whatever and you guys need something different and i was like well (laughs) if maybe we should start a p.o box for our three listeners (laughs) 
<laughs> get fan mail like once every year <laughs> i love that your sister's like y'all you need to spice it up yeah. like i'm sick of hearing peach melasini and stress yeah. relief every week yeah. like let's move on oh my god maybe when we hang out um when i come back we can go shopping for tea yes. and just buy a bunch of yeah, new, just stuff. new random shit that we should yes try. yes <laughs> I think it's time. <laughs> I think it is too. Oh, I just thought oh, it was really funny. That's actually really funny. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Do you have a P.O. box? <laughs> sure. <laughs> so what about pop culture moments for the week? I literally have one. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I have a so, couple, but you you can go first. Okay. I think the biggest thing is just the Johnny Depp and Amber Heard trial is now done. So... Yeah. Johnny Depp was awarded $15 million. Mm -hmm. Amber Heard was awarded $2 million. Her lawyer has made it known that she can't pay that off. So I think she's going to file for an appeal. Yep. And that's kind of where everything's at. So I never wanted to really speak my piece about this on here because I feel like it's too hard to discuss the complexity of the Mm -hmm. case. And also, I don't know the legal stuff. I haven't looked enough into it, so I don't feel like I can say properly an opinion if I don't have the facts. Same. I will say it took social media by storm. Like, it It was crazy. Like, I was on Johnny Depp and Amber Heard TikTok side for so long, for the six weeks that they were doing those testimonies and all that stuff. So, I mean... I wasn't following it, but like it was constantly on my timeline. Yeah, no, me too. And I, you can't get away from it. Yeah. And I'm sorry, like not something to make fun of, but some of the things people would do were so funny. <laughs> like my roommate was telling me that like over, <laughs> over the weekend, her family was here for her graduation. Mm-hmm. Whenever they would get in little arguments, like they would just say to each other, Aquaman. <laughs> <laughs> because of that one audio clip when amber's like just going off on johnny and then he just ends with going aquaman like i just it's like not funny but it just really makes me like nothing aggravates people more than when you're upset and someone just doesn't act like you're upset at all oh yeah like oh do you want to know something funny (laughs) sure so the the like re it, it was announced like the what is it called what's that word the when verdict the, yes the verdict that was announced on wednesday at 3 p.m eastern time so sure. for me that was 2 p.m okay. and i was at work and again i'm not i wasn't following it that closely so it's like okay sure. well great it's gonna be read today whatever mm-hmm. and <laughs> we had a client meeting at that time but the client <laughs> sent us a note saying like hey can we like push it 15 minutes back because i want to <laughs> hear the verdict <laughs> and we were like yeah yeah sure sure <laughs> and then i love that and then it was delayed so even though we pushed it we we still didn't have the verdict read oh. so we started the meeting and then at like 2 mm-hmm. 20 they everyone yeah. came back into the courtroom and our client was like ah they're they're, they're starting they're starting <laughs> and so we all just had to wait for like 10 minutes while that like lady read off like everything it was so hilarious <laughs> <laughs> I love that you're in like a workplace though where you're just like I, yeah listen to it like yeah. I think that's so but it's crazy how people were so invested in it yeah it's it like is. it's like a sports game or like something like people were like invested yeah it's crazy because I was watching it on YouTube they were live streaming mm. it and it was like yeah. one of the channels that was live streaming it and our live stream had like two million people watching i'm like imagine Mm -hmm. all the other people watching a different channel yeah Yeah, like i just that i can't even like compute like that's crazy it is crazy what things will get as big as they are yeah you know it's wild to me yeah (sighs) what else do you got on your list or what do you have on your list because that was my thing yeah interestingly (laughs) enough i forgot to add that one to my list but i'm happy you brought that up First one, I Mm -hmm. am on Top Gun TikTok and not the kind where it's like, oh, the reviews, uh uh-uh. It is Miles Teller (laughs) and Glenn Powell TikTok, a.k.a. (gasps) Top Gun TikTok. I, the do-do-do-do-do, do-do-do-do. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I am so I am so obsessed. The amount of times that I have seen that clip of Miles Teller dancing on, on the, the beach, beach with his six pack, I'm like, I know. sir, sir. I know, because I never thought of him as a person with a six pack. Yeah. Like, I always yeah. thought of him as like, he was always cute, mm-hmm. but he was never hot. Mm-hmm. He's hot. Oh. He has crossed that line. He got into really good shape for this movie. <laughs> they all did, let me yeah. tell you. And you know what the best part is? Yeah. His wife is on TikTok <laughs> and she is like just going along with yeah. it. She thinks it's so funny. I, and I love that she just like rolls with it. I love it too. Cause like she's giving us all the, con- like all the yeah. behind the scenes like content. And I'm like, you are living the dream. You're literally she, living literally. the dream. <laughs> At first it was all the stuff about Miles Teller and Top Gun. Now mm-hmm. people are like, you don't get to love Miles Teller unless you loved him in Footloose. And I'm like, okay, but now all of you are saying that. And Footloose, I will say, because I'm going to be that person, the new Footloose is one of my favorite movies of all time because I just think it's so good. But also, I'm sorry, y'all were not thirsting over Willard in Footloose, no matter <laughs> what you say. No one... <laughs> Wait, can you remind me like what Footloose this one was? The new one with Julianne Huff. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. He, wait, who was he? I don't even remember. He was Willard, so he was like the main guy's best friend. Oh, you know who I think of for Miles Teller is The Spectacular Now with Shailene Woodley. I've never seen it. Okay, that movie is fantastic, which I think came out even before Footloose. So I am allowed to simp over Miles Teller, okay? Everyone sit down. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Glenn Powell will be looking good too. Oh my God, Glenn and Powell. And I love him and love of my life. <laughs> yes. And now, oh my gosh. And just like associating him with like set it up. Yeah. I'm like, all right, I'm in. I am like, yes, he, please. He got into a really good shape for this movie too i was like yes, damn boy like <laughs> what what Literally. regimen do they have you on <laughs> yeah y'all sorry no i'm just thinking about it anyway what <laughs> else you that's got? all i wanted to say about top gun <laughs> haven't haven't seen the movie don't know if it's no. good <laughs> like, apparently it's the biggest box office debut of tom cruise's career whoa and, and i think it's because of all the girls oh. I really do. Have you seen the TikToks where it's like convincing my boyfriend to go to go watch Top Gun and it's like what he watches Top Gun for and what I watch Top Gun for. It's so funny. Oh my God. (laughs) Okay. Next one. Mm -hmm. Kim finally talked about Pete on their show, The Kardashians. I saw that. I thought it was so interesting that she said that at first she was just DTF because she heard (laughs) about about the the BDE. (laughs) Okay, wait. And then (laughs) I just want to say that, like, I don't know if I should if i should feel proud or ashamed that i know what those acronyms mean and when she was talking about it i it just clicked in my head automatically and i was like she just said acronyms she didn't say anything i know but we all knew what she was saying i know i know and sometimes when i think about it too much the fact that he was engaged to ariana grande and is now dating kim kardashian Mm -hmm. in the same lifetime like what does this guy do but she's so like likes him so much like she just talks about how he's like the nicest most genuine guy she said Mm -hmm. genuine was the word she would describe him as so i think it's like the whole nice guy thing for pete Mm. because pete can get all these freaking girls and people and he's not the most like conventionally attractive guy so it's like okay well what what is it and i think it is because he is so nice he's a gentleman Mm -hmm. kim said that he is like genuine i think um ariana grande said that he's like the nicest person ever too Mm -hmm. so i think that's it as well as i think it was when they were at the met gala or somewhere where like pete was shielding kim in the elevator so the paparazzi couldn't take pictures of her i was like wait a second wait a second (laughs) i know so cute so cute yeah i love their relationship it doesn't make sense to me i don't think Mm -hmm. i mean what do i know i don't feel like it's gonna last forever but i i'm glad they're both happy yeah well kim said that she just wanted to like have fun and like live life like when she reached out to Pete, it was all just to have fun. Like, I don't think yeah. it's, I don't think they're taking it seriously. And if they are taking it seriously, like, 
good for them but like yeah. right now i think it's just like they're they're having fun like which is totally. great after yeah. all that she's going through so <laughs> <laughs> next one not really pop culture but i feel like we can still talk about it um the boston celtics are in the nba finals against the golden state warriors Yes, they are. Our boy Jason Tatum. <laughs> what up? It's so funny because I remember we went to go see, we went yeah. to a Boston game when I went, visited you in Boston and we were just like having fun and now they're in the finals and I'm like, okay, cool. I know. And I remember we showed up there. We knew nothing about basketball at that point. Yeah. And we're like, we're going to love Jason Tatum. We didn't know that he was like the Celtics star. We were just like, we're going to love him. Yeah. And then we did and now he's like the biggest star and i also really love steph curry mm -hmm. so i think it's really cool that like those teams ended up in the finals yeah so i agree i i think i've like always loved steph curry and he's just so good at basketball it literally doesn't make <laughs> it does not make sense in my head so i'm super excited to see that matchup because i feel like they're really like equal like both mm -hmm. teams are very equal so but yeah i just wanted to say that because i thought it was funny that we saw them earlier this year <laughs> Okay, last thing that I have on my pop culture list is <laughs> the Liam Payne slander on TikTok. Oh, dear Lord. Yes. That boy makes my skin crawl. Okay, I have a few things to say go about this. First of all, you're going to go and say all these things about One Direction when nobody says anything about it anymore number two you're gonna go do it on logan paul's i know podcast. out of all people ain't nobody gonna take you seriously exactly and the fact that he thought strip that down <laughs> outsold everyone else boy zendaya has more spotify listeners than you do and she doesn't even really have a music career yeah no so you literally don't you you don't you don't know what's going on to be no, honest you. I like saw the like little snippets of him talking on a podcast and I was like, oh, like I don't I don't know what podcast he went on. And then I found out it was the Logan Paul podcast. I was like, honey, honey, that is the Literally. last podcast you want to go on and talk. And it was just like such a pick me behavior, like such a pick me oh, energy. And I'm like, 100 percent. OK, like a part of me is like, OK, Liam. I want to understand you and I want to have sympathy for you. But the way that you were talking about your past bandmates literally pisses me off. You guys all did that together for like and the fame that you guys freaking acquired was crazy. Literally. One Direction was huge. And it's mm -hmm. just like him going out there and like basically slandering everyone. And I'm just like, I I can't like he's just he's living so much in the past. And he I just is. well, because that's all he has. I know. I know. And I a part of me feels bad, but then another part of me doesn't because it's like you're out here like being like, yeah, Zayn had a really hard um, upbringing and blah, 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 all this stuff. And I'm like, just don't stop. Stop talking about them. That's not even your business. Exactly. And and it makes him especially look bad after it comes out that he cheated on his fiance. I was just, I was so just gonna say that. you need to get your life together, boy. Yeah. No. Yeah, I just I just a really bad like ick for me and i think too, i didn't watch the whole podcast episode i've only been getting snippets because i've over my dead body would i ever listen to Hell a no. logan paul podcast no. <laughs> <laughs> um, never and i heard that like he didn't say <laughs> i heard that Sorry. the only person he didn't say by name was harry yeah because he knows his fans will come from yeah. his throat yeah don't even try yeah harry. and another thing too that because i Again, I'm on that side of TikTok, so a lot of people are, like, commentating on it. And I've heard that, like, management, right, the whole Stitch thing was that Liam was, like, the first, like, the front runner mm -hmm. of the band, like, the guy who, like, kind of ran the group. And management was really, really pushing that at the height of One Direction. Mm -hmm. But the person who had the charisma to be the l band leader was Harry. Yep, and he 100%. naturally he naturally rose to the top and even to this day too like you can he is mm -hmm. so successful and i think liam expected it whereas the others worked for it maybe i don't know oh no i agree because remember simon simon told him that he would yeah. be the, <laughs> he would be the top the top guy oh. at the top for this band so i just i think yeah his perception was like this is my spot but he not that he didn't work for it i think it's just like he thought it was going to be given to him and it mm -hmm. wasn't 
of so. yeah nope anyways <sighs> i am living my best life on that side of tiktok because i was never a liam girl <laughs> i i never even listened to one direction that much like i like some of their songs yeah. but i never listened to them that much i think if i was a girl yeah i mean that sounded <laughs> not <laughs> I always was a girl always gonna be a girl but <laughs> But um, oh I was I was always leaning towards Niall because he's like the little sweetheart. Oh, you are which such, really goes again. You are such a Niall really, girl. You think? Yeah. Okay, <laughs> I'll take it. He's a cutie. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, what were you gonna say? No, I was gonna say it just goes against my instincts now. But I wish I had stuck to that sweetheart <laughs> motivation. Yeah. But anyway, shall we get into our topic today? Yes, I am. <laughs> so excited <laughs> i am so excited i can't I know, like, me too i i started sharing my thoughts with you but then i was like oh i have to save it for the podcast so yeah I'm, I'm intrigued to hear your thoughts about it too i love this book not in the way i've loved other contemporary mm -hmm. romances but like it is just such like a guilty pleasure yeah. not even i don't like the term guilty pleasure if i like it i like it yeah. it doesn't have to be guilty but i just really like this book and it's very simple just very cute like very yeah. mindless and so it for those of you listening you obviously know already but we are going to be talking about it happened one summer by tessa bailey she also has a sequel to this book out that recently mm -hmm. came out called hook line and sinker which selena you need to read it now that you've read this one it's really really good i literally just bought it at target the yes! other day yes! Yes! <laughs> yeah <laughs> okay you'll have to let me know your thoughts about that okay one. um okay um but yeah should we just jump right in yeah, I mean, if you haven't read the book, don't listen any further. Go read it because it is really, yeah. really good. It's so good. It's so quick to like get into it, too. Mm -hmm. um, so go read it and then come back and listen to this episode. Yes. Ooh, OK. All right. So here we go with my stupid synopsis. <laughs> synopsis. Synopsis. Sure. <laughs> OK, great. Chapter one is the chaotic intro to our main protagonist, Piper Bellinger. At an A-list party, Adrian breaks off his three-week-long relationship with Piper. Before he does, though, he tells Piper that she is like everyone else and that essentially she doesn't know what life is, especially outside of social media. This then gives Piper an idea to do something reckless to make herself stand out. So, I mean, the first chapter is pretty short, so I don't have a lot mm -hmm. to say about it. It just kind of sets up the rest of the book in the sense of her and Adrian's relationship and her previous relationships mm -hmm. um, with men and how they've treated her and yeah. what they think about her. Because obviously throughout the book, that becomes like a big source of her um insecurity and i just really like how she wrote this first chapter because i think it really gave us an idea of who piper was right away which i really liked i agree and i texted you this but i'll say it again i think mm -hmm. my first impression of her was like i can definitely tell that this is supposed to be alexis from schitt's yeah. creek but i was <laughs> getting i was getting a little like vibe of emily from emily in paris mm. but i think as i kept reading the book it was definitely alexis from Jet's creek so alexis yeah. so alexis oh my gosh but yeah i don't have a ton to say mm -hmm. about um chapter one besides i i do like the description about how she was like i'm 28 i'm the oldest at the party but i'm still fun like blah 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 yeah. i feel like a lot of us in our 20s have that moment where you kind of switch from being like a young adult to like a real life adult yeah. when you're like these things I used to be doing aren't that enjoyable to me anymore. So yeah. like, how do I adjust to like being a real adult? You yeah. Know? So no, I definitely. thought that was relatable. Do you have anything else to say about chapter one? No, that's it. All right. I will jump into chapter two. Here is my synopsis. In chapter two, Piper finds herself in jail after throwing a party for 200 people at a hotel pool that had been closed. How did she get in? Breaking the window, of course. After charming the prison guard, Piper was able to use a less disgusting bathroom, and by the time she's done, her sister Hannah has bailed her out. Finally, Piper makes it to her getaway car, but not before getting hounded by paparazzi and second-guessing some of her choices. So I just thought it was so 
funny to add this about her character about like her relationship with the prison guard and how she was just very like oh i'm in jail again Mm -hmm. like i feel really bad but can i please use the bathroom and blah 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 and Mm -hmm. i just thought it was really funny that the prison guard was like oh yeah sure like yeah i don't know i just thought it was really funny how she could charm people like that oh yeah i think for this chapter it was so vivid like Mm -hmm. i loved it because i felt like i was there with Piper and just the Mm -hmm. way that like Tessa Bailey wrote it I was like I love this like it's so (laughs) it's so funny but also seems like so tangible yes 100% Mm -hmm. she's really good at setting the stage in a way that feels like real yeah you know yeah the one thing I do like about this chapter as well is the background on her and Kirby's friendship that we get right away Mm -hmm. because I think it especially is important later in the book which we'll talk about but I think just like the fakeness of their relationship and the fact that Kirby called the police on her kind of gives us a sense of like the world that Piper is living in you know I was kind of pissed that Kirby called the cops I was pissed too I was like what the I was like what kind of friend are you like ugh well, yeah, she's not a friend, yeah. you know, at all. Mm-hmm. Frickin' Kirby. <laughs> Anyways, I have beef with Kirby. Um, <laughs> I do love Hannah and her first interaction because mm-hmm. the way that Tessa Bailey writes it, we get such a good idea of what Hannah is like right away, especially in comparison yeah. to Piper. But I love that they're like they have such a close sibling relationship. Yeah. And like, even though they're so different, Hannah's like, Oh, Piper, you got in jail again. And she's like, I know, I know. Like, are you going to play me some music for the ride home? And like, just, I don't know. I just love their like sister relationship. I just love sister stories. Like going back to book lovers. Like, oh my God. Just, it's so good. It's so good. So good. So (laughs) good. Yeah, that's pretty much all I have for the first couple chapters. Because I feel like Mm -hmm. it was a lot of like background. So, all right. Jumping into chapter three. Here's my synopsis. Piper gets a wake-up call when her stepfather tells her that because of her stunt, she'll be sent to Westport for three months, the town her mother and father were from. Hannah, her sister, is dead set on going with Piper, and her mother is in agreement with her stepfather. Before the chapter ends, her mother warns Piper that the fishermen there are unpolished and direct and will always always choose the sea over a woman. So, again, I think this chapter emphasized that she was really like Alexis from Mm Schitt's Creek. Even like her mannerisms. I was like, yes, you are so Alexis. (laughs) Like a part of me like couldn't even take her seriously at that point. I was like, okay, sure. (laughs) I think I texted you this as well, but I'll say it again. Yeah. The logistics of this whole deal was so weird for me that it kind of snapped me out of the book it didn't make sense that her stepfather would send piper away for three months because his investor wanted to stick it to him but logically if the investor wanted to stick it to him he would have just pulled the funding from the movie yeah literally i don't understand what he's benefiting if he's sending the guy's daughter to like a random town i don't know it was just weird no, I agree with you. I had a really hard time getting behind the reasoning yeah. of why she ended up in the town. Like, I get the scenario of, like, you need to go somewhere outside of L.A. to, yeah. like, learn hard work, like, blah, blah, blah. If it had just been that, it would have made sense. But then thrown in with the investment banking stuff with the movie, I was like, I don't fully understand. Yeah, no, it just didn't really make sense. Mm-mm. Another thing that was really weird for me Mm -hmm. was her mom like her mom was like oh you can go and learn about your dad because I've been so selfish about it like yes oh in a way I understand her mom's trauma and her past wounds but it's shitty to send Piper there for a punishment you know like it just sets the tone of like well I'm gonna send you to Westport and while you're there you can learn about your father like I it was just that's weird. like the way she should have to go there to learn about her dad exactly and that's why I didn't like it because I was like that's so weird like all of a sudden your entire life you've never talked about you know their dad but then all of a sudden when Piper is getting punished she can finally learn about her dad like it was just the weirdest like convenient thing yeah no it, yeah no <laughs> it doesn't it just yeah the, she she i was not on her side right no. now yeah no that's 
pretty much it that I have for chapter three. Do you have anything else? I do not. Okay. Moving on to chapter four. Here's my synopsis. (laughs) You're so funny. (laughs) (laughs) We get our first introduction to the tough, closed off, (laughs) no bullshit captain of the Delray, Brendan Taggart. Is that how you say his last name? I have no idea. Taggart. Cool. I don't know. And literally in my notes, I go, eek. (laughs) (laughs) No, honestly, though, like, I, he's such a mutt. Like, he, even on the cover of the book, he looks like mutt. Like, it's not. Yeah. Okay, continuing on. Yeah. He watches as Piper and Hannah arrive in town and announce that their late father, Henry Cross, had owned the bar they were in. There's already tension between Brendan and Piper as the ladies (laughs) announce they're staying in the apartment above the bar. Brendan helps carry their bags to the second floor. I also texted you this, but I'm going to say it again. (laughs) I don't think I have ever hopped onto a train faster than i hopped onto the brendan train <laughs> like i don't I, you loved him right away yes. which is so rare for you it really is like even with gus and um charlie even like um adam from the love hypothesis took me a little while to jump on the train but like brendan came in and i was like yep <laughs> See, here's the thing. I feel like I'm never hesitant to jump mm. on the train for people yeah. because I'm like, I know you're going to have character development and I'll like you by the end of the book. So I'm just going to get on the train now oh. and then it'll it'll be great. I'll be there along for the ride. Oh, OK, OK. No, they have to like win me over. <laughs> OK, <laughs> fair enough. Like, show fair me. Enough. Yeah. <laughs> OK. <sighs> I will say the voice that Tessa Bailey wrote and used for Brendan was so good. I could feel his voice was like tangible and like his personality like really jumped Mm -hmm. off the page. Like I I loved it so much. The last thing that I'll say is that I thought the (laughs) tension between Piper and Brendan right off the bat was interesting. Like I guess I wasn't sure how to feel about it. I didn't hate it, but I didn't love it either. I just I was wondering like how you felt about it. I think it it was a little confusing to me because it wasn't like a full enemies to lovers or anything like that. But I also was just like Charlie or (laughs) Charlie, not Charlie. (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) Thinking about a different man. Uh, Yeah, literally. (laughs) Yes. Um, But no, Brendan right away was so judgmental of her and just they were so rude to each other right away that I was like, people don't act like this in real life. Like, I know it's supposed to be, like, the banter and, like, the enemies to lovers. So, like, I get it and I'm here for it because I like this book, but I wasn't totally buying into it. I was like, I feel like you're being rude to each other for no reason. I definitely felt that from Brendan's side, that just because Mm -hmm. she, like, was an outsider and she came into town, like, he was like, no, I don't like you or whatever. So I was just like... You know, him and his routine. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yes yes <laughs> but that is all that i have for chapter four great all right chapter five i feel like the first like half of the book goes pretty fast and then uh-huh. the second half is more like longer chapters oh yeah yeah uh-huh. <laughs> okay chapter five synopsis In this chapter, Piper and Hannah are brought up to see their new apartment. Brendan clearly doesn't believe they'll make it in an apartment this way, as evidenced by the mice running around. But that comes to no surprise to Piper, who feels that everyone underestimates her capabilities. The chapter ends with Piper blurting out something too true and Brendan wondering if a reality show was being filmed. I love that she notices like the ring that he's wearing right away Mm -hmm. and she's like okay not going there I respect that but also I love that detail like literally like five chapters into the book we get that and it made me so curious about it right away same because I was like obviously I know the whole story now but I remember and I think you texted me this too Mm -hmm. it's like is he married is he still married are they getting a divorce Mm -hmm. is she like has she died like what is the situation going on because i feel like depending on what it had been could have changed like the story oh you know definitely and we saw that in beach read with gus mm-hmm. like it it, <laughs> it sets a yes. different tone completely depending on the situation so when i saw that i was like oh, 
oh my gosh, he's getting a divorce or or yeah. is he still married? Like, that's weird though because I know he's the love interest, but I was like, oh, what if she passed? Like, what happened, you know? <sighs> yeah. Damn. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay, so I don't have a ton to say about this chapter. I will say mm-hmm. the way that Piper will say things, I question sometimes in the sense that like, She's very quick to blur out these things that I'm like, would you really say that out loud in this moment? Like when she said, I can be in a room full of people that I know and still not feel like I belong. I'm like, you would not say that in front of a stranger you just met. Like I just... And then, of course, he's sitting there thinking about it. But reading that, I was like, ain't no way you just said that out of nowhere. Like, what? And like, I feel like that kind of happened in the way that... um, she describes like having Brendan feel that she's worthless and all mm-hmm. these things. And like, it is really sad. And I think it gives like Piper more of a background and more yeah. of like a realistic personality. But I was just like, girl, why'd you say that? <laughs> I agree. It. It's like, I know it's a novel because of those kind of like dialogue and phrases and stuff because like no one ever in real life or even in a movie that'd be so weird in a movie too like so that's kind of like why I'm okay with it because I know that it's a novel and I know that we need to get background so I was like fine with it but I do Mm -hmm. agree that it was like I don't know if you would say that. <laughs> it's one of those things that's fine in a book, but then would translate bad, like you said, yeah. to a movie, just like that noise you just made <laughs> in The Hating Game. <laughs> sorry. Um, I'm sorry. I'm to getting my flashbacks. Defense, to my defense, though, it's that entire movie is just bad. Yeah, like, you know, you right, you right. Screen, yeah. Uh-uh. <laughs> you right. <laughs> um, anything else for Chapter 5? No. All right. Chapter 6, baby. In chapter six, why did what accent in chapter six we get inside? <laughs> I hate myself. Okay. In chapter six, we get insight. <laughs> Sorry, I'm making myself laugh. We get insight into Brendan's preference for a rigid schedule, tradition, and predictability. However, that train of thought is interrupted when he's out shopping for groceries and spots Piper trying to shop with serious help, of course. Brendan makes his assumptions about Piper known, which of course she fights back about. Her romper does not go unnoticed and neither does his interest in Piper. Next, they slightly open up to each other with hesitation and before he knows it, Brendan helps Piper put together a meal for her sister and finds himself wondering if there's more to Piper than meets the eye. It is also revealed that Brendan's wife has passed away. So... I really like this chapter. Mm, me too. <laughs> um, I I love that it starts out getting the background on um, Brendan that we didn't have before um, since we already got all the background about Piper. I like that it's like, okay, here's the background for Brendan moving forward yeah. because then I think it's set up for their conversation in the supermarket to like mm-hmm. make more sense or like get behind the two of them together because we understand them both more now, Yeah, you know? Um, and I love how he's all about his rigid schedule and traditions and I just love that theme throughout the book and like how it changes <laughs> like he, he, he. I like that he can't forget about the quote we were just talking about that mm-hmm. Piper said, but I'm also like, you like, ugh, it's just so cheesy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, okay, again, I thought it was believable, but it also showed me a side of Brendan that like he's very caring, yeah. right? So mm. again, it's like it's just a device to use in sure. the novel, even though it's like a little cheesy. But I really yeah. liked it because it showed that he was like really like it didn't leave his mind. 100%. I think yeah. that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. <laughs> okay. There's this quote. <laughs> okay. There's this quote that Brendan says that I'm just like, which I just feels like sets up so many chapters in the future. He says, shorts that ended right below her tight ass and made her look like a goddamn disco ball. Like, oh my God. The way yeah. he describes things and says things, I, for me personally, Like, I love the book, but sometimes it's just a little too blunt for me. Like, you know how I, like, Mm -hmm. I just don't, I don't like nicknames. I don't like dirty talk. Mm -hmm. Like, like, I just, I just don't like it. Oh, yeah, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. (laughs) Okay, but I did like when he said she would got pretty, prettier overnight, damn it. I was like, oh, that's so cute. I know. Um, 
Okay. And then I have marked down something that I was going to read, but I don't know what it is. Okay. So give me a second. This is just showing his immediate attraction to Piper. Okay. Okay. With a roll of his shoulders, he tried to ease the tension bracketed by his ribcage. This girl probably inspired the same reaction every man she ever came across. Even in the harsh supermarket lighting, he couldn't pick out a single flaw. Didn't want to look that closely, but he'd have to be dead not to. Might as well admit it, Piper's body reminded him for the first time in a long, long time that he had needs that couldn't be satisfied forever by his own hand. <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> I Like, he cannot... It. <laughs> I know I read that paragraph like three times because I was like wait a second wait a second <laughs> but I, yep. again I love it because it's like his voice and his like uh -huh. personality like Tessa Bailey did such a good job and 100% I think that's how guys think sometimes oh, yeah. like they're just oh sex butts boobs blah, oh, you know okay Clearly, I talk to a lot of men. <laughs> okay. okay. Although I love this scene and like where it ends, Brendan is so rude to her for mm -hmm. no reason. And it made me so mad. Like when he's like, I bet you're used to men falling all over you. Like, that's not even what she's saying or mm -hmm. like getting it at all. Like you're making assumptions about her that she's dealt with plenty of times before. Yeah. Like, can't you just lay off? Like it pissed me off. Yeah, I think in a way he went a little too overboard for me at the start because it's like, yeah, OK, a part of me can understand that maybe he like likes her so much and it's such a foreign feeling to him that mm -hmm. the only response he has is to like push her away or be mean, which, OK, cool. Sure. But sometimes he just like went out of his way to be mean. And I'm like, dude, yes. you need to calm down. Literally. But I do love that Piper would fight back. She's yeah. like, no, I'm not going to take this shit yeah. from you. And she's like, no, let me let me tell you how it is, yes. sir. <laughs> OK, I love this little part when he like barely touches her elbow and she's like, I'm not interested. Yeah. And he's like, neither am I. And because she sees like the wedding ring and they both like notice her notice it. Mm -hmm. And we're like, oh, my God, you guys are both like lying to yourselves. Yeah. Like whatever. Like, you know, that. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> OK, the way that they open up to each other feels so blunt and mm -hmm. out of nowhere like you're being complete like he's being completely rude to her and then all of a sudden she's opening up about her dad to him and i'm just like that's a weird time to bring it up but like i also love it you know because i i don't know yeah but also it's like in a grocery store so it's like yeah what is happening why, why are you talking about your dead dad by the bolognese like yeah. what is happening yeah. here i do like the bolognese and how he's like you just do it like blah 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 yeah. and she's like you turn it off like yeah. she really just girl doesn't know. right over her head okay. yes so he leaves the grocery store and the last line of the chapter says and hell if he didn't smile on his way back up west ocean like he can't help it i love when like romance books like write it in a way where it's like the characters literally cannot help themselves i yeah. love that i love that which again i really liked that side of brendan so i was like okay fine like i mm -hmm. i still like you even though you're kind of being an ass like literally. i know you have a soft side mm -hmm. me too <laughs> <laughs> um that's all i have for chapter six sweet moving on to chapter seven so the sisters take a trip to the harbor to see Westport's memorial of their father. Piper feels guilty that she doesn't feel anything when looking at the statue of her father, and the ladies make their way back to No Name. Piper meets Mick Forrester and realizes that Brendan married his daughter, Desiree. Mick tells Piper to visit Opal and invites the ladies to a Friday night get-together at Blow the Man Down. So kind of going back to the beginning and just how mm -hmm. Tessa Bailey set this up, I couldn't get on board with the whole like meeting my family and digging into my family roots because it felt so forced in my opinion. So when yeah. Piper said that she didn't feel anything when she like looked at this like memorial, well, of course you didn't. Your mom literally just told you that he was from Westport. You know nothing of him. Of course you don't feel anything. So it was just a big, a really big like disconnect and really disjointed mm -hmm. for me. So it was just kind of weird. No, me too. And I think I got behind it more and more as time went on. Yes. But I, I just, I had, like you said, a hard time buying into it. Yes. I just, I was like, of course you don't feel anything. Like, you literally know nothing. Yeah. Like, 
it's not your fault that you don't feel anything your mom told you nothing about him you know literally yeah i was so excited to hear more about brendan's wife just like little snippets because i just wanted to know more like i wanted the Mm -hmm. entire story but yeah so it was just interesting that like when when mick came to the bar piper was like putting pieces in her head while we were as well which was really fun Mm -hmm. okay one thing yes i thought it was fucking weird that mick didn't tell piper the friday night thing was a memorial yes what the (laughs) frick that makes no sense and also why are you oh my god okay it is and the fact he's talking about his daughter yeah in a way that she's still alive i hate mick i'm sorry he's the villain of this story yeah sorry i hated him at the end i will say though (laughs) i will say in a way i understand why he didn't tell piper that it was a memorial (laughs) Stop. Sorry. <laughs> I'm trying to control it. You I know just, why I hate him at the end. I okay? know. I know. I'm just thinking about it. I hate him. I know. Okay. Sorry. So <laughs> going back to my train of thought, I understand why Mick didn't tell Piper that it was a memorial because in his head, he doesn't think that it's a memorial. And we especially get this in later chapters from Brendan's perspective that like, they don't grieve. They they all just kind of act like everything's still okay and that like even though Desiree is technically gone, like she's still like here with us. And so they, a part of me like understands why Mick didn't tell her it was a memorial, but Piper was so, so blindsided. No, literally. Um, they just don't know how to let go. I know. Unfortunately. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> all right. That is the end of chapter seven. Do you have anything else for this chapter? I sure do not. Chapter eight. Okay. So after cleaning their apartment all afternoon, Piper cooks Hannah dinner. Piper tells of her run in with Brendan at their grocery store that morning, as well as his sour and rude mood. The chapter ends with Piper setting the food on fire by accident and running out into the street for help. (laughs) So, okay. I thought this chapter was like really sweet. It made me realize that Piper is like such a good big sister even though she comes off as like ditzy and she wants to have fun like she she still really really cares about Hannah and I'm like that is the sweetest thing ever I know I know like wait say that last part again sorry I zoned out that (laughs) (laughs) that I was just saying that sorry I know you've said someone cares about the other, but I don't Piper, know which way you said it. <laughs> Piper, I'm sorry. No, you're okay. <laughs> Piper really cares about Hannah. Oh, yeah, yeah. 100%. She really does. Yeah. Especially because her sister, like, sacrificed her summer to come yes. here with Piper. Yeah. I think Piper really just wants to do right by her sister. I mean, they already have that relationship, but she really, really just cares about her. Their relationship is just so sweet. I know. I loved it so much. Mm-hmm. And then the only other note that I have for chapter eight mm-hmm. is that I just I just love the way that Tessa Bailey created the foundation <laughs> and precedent that Brendan and Piper were on opposite sides of the world, but like opposites attract. And I just like love it so <laughs> much because it's just like a good it's just a good trope. Yes. Um, but yeah, no, I just I love it. I love the opposite attract trope when it like fits. Sometimes I feel like it's forced where I'm like, I know opposites are supposed to attract, but there's no way you guys would ever like each other. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Like, but these two, it's like so perfect. Yeah. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Um, Anything else for chapter eight? Nope. That's it. All right. Chapter nine. Chapter 9 gives us insight into Fox and Brendan's friendship, specifically how Fox gives Brendan a lot of crap that Brendan feels uncomfortable about. Fox brings up Piper, to which Brendan doesn't share much about, but makes it clear she's off limits. No questions asked. Quickly, Brendan jumps out of his seat, grabs a fire extinguisher, and saves Piper from the burning pan. (laughs) Fox, as the good friend he is, takes Hannah away for a few minutes, which gives Brendan and Piper time to talk about what brought Piper to Westport and why Brendan will only eat fish and chips. <laughs> the chapter concludes with Brendan missing an opportunity to ask Piper out on a date and Fox again making Brendan uncomfortable. Okay. I love Fox and Brendan's like friendship. Mm-hmm. Like I feel like Piper and Hannah, 
Brendan and Fox, Brendan and Piper, Hannah and Fox, mm-hmm. like it all just fits so perfectly. Yeah. And the minute that Fox like brought Hannah to the like record store, I was like, all right, where's their book? Yeah. I was like, I know this is going to be something, which um, Hook, Line and Sinker is about that. Yeah. I just I just love that. But I love um that Fox teases Brendan so much and knows how to make him uncomfortable because yeah. Brendan just hates that stuff. But Fox is like, no, you like her, dude. Fox is like <laughs> a little annoying brother mm-hmm. who like just can't what? shut up. <laughs> <laughs> That's a perfect way to describe him. But at the same time, I also think he's a fantastic friend because he's always the one telling Brendan like, dude, it's been seven years. Yeah. Like, it's fine. Like, he knows it's making Brendan uncomfy. And he's yeah. like, dude, it's fine. Like, you do what you need to do for you, mm-hmm. you know? Um, <laughs> I loved <laughs> when Brendan was like, just don't go after her. No, don't ask me why. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I love that too because it's like, it's almost like he himself couldn't admit that he wanted to go for Piper, yes. but anyone else could not. And he, he yes. needed to establish that, you know? But he couldn't admit yes. it yet that he no, really he, liked her. Oh my he gosh. fully, like, is not capable yes. of explaining that he is attracted to another woman. Yes. Oh my gosh. Okay. I, my heart started racing when he jumped up and he grabbed the extinguisher and he went out there. But this is when I fell in love with Hannah because she was just like, you're a freaking bully. Don't dare act like she's stupid for yeah. setting this on fire. It's my fault it's set on fire. Yeah. She's the one who's smart enough to get it out of here. And I love that Hannah just like chewed him out. Hannah just doesn't deal with the bullshit. Like she no. says it as it is and i love mm-hmm. that for her like me too and it's so cute that like she's the younger sister and that like mm-hmm. yes piper will always protect hannah but hannah will protect piper too 100 yeah. percent, and i love that and i feel like it makes their relationship really like equal yeah and like oh i just love it another one of those things where i get it and how it like progresses the story forward mm-hmm. but i'm like did you need to say this like when hannah said the last thing she needs is another man making her feel like garbage like yeah. girlfriend like i i get what it means for the story and i can get behind mm-hmm. it but it just seems so random <laughs> I mean, okay, in a way, I can see, like, in the moment and, like, the heat of it that, like, Hannah, because Hannah was pissed, too. Mm -hmm. So, in a way, I can see how that could have slipped up, like, from Hannah. So, Mm -hmm. okay. (laughs) Fair fair enough. Um, Okay. And I love... When Fox is just like, oh, I'll take her to the record store. And Brendan is so clueless that he's just trying to give Brendan time with Piper. I know. Like, Brendan is so dumb. I know. <laughs> oh, I just love it. And I love the way it's, like, written. Like, she does a good job of, like, writing how clueless Brendan is. The one thing that I do appreciate about their relationship and the writing is that, like, Brendan apologizes and Piper accepts and they can just like move on Mm -hmm. like they don't dwell on an issue for like so long that I'm like okay just get over it like it's not like yes they have the miscommunication but it's like they still can just like move on from it yeah I hate when characters like get stuck on something for a long time so I really appreciated that about (laughs) this book um and then i just love them talking at the bar and like her trying to get him to try the pot pie yeah and he was like oh, i'm gonna finish the whole thing yeah. even though he hates it like i just but i also <laughs> love that he's like such a like i'm i'm gonna get fish and chips that's all i'm gonna yes. get like that's all i'm yeah. gonna eat <laughs> yeah <laughs> like okay brendan <laughs> okay brendan freaking relax yeah. dude and then i love that there's this one part i forget exactly how it's set up but it says that he laughs and it like scares everybody and oh, i don't yeah. know why but i it was written so vividly that i could like hear his laugh in my mm-hmm. head like and i imagine his laugh being so stupid like ha ha like i don't know why i just i just do. okay that reminds um, me i will say that tessa bailey did such a good job like determining and creating the foundation of like what brendan means to westport like how mm-hmm. like when he yes. finally spoke in the bar back in like chapter four or whatever everyone like shut up because like the mm-hmm. captain is talking and stuff i love that she like set that yes. up because it tells us that he's like a huge fucking deal which makes yeah. it even better because he's like so head over heels for piper <laughs> but he's like the tough guy at westport yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh no i love it and you're so right she does a great 
great job of setting up how important he is. Yeah, <laughs> I love it. Um, that's pretty much what I have for um, that chapter. But Okay, sweet. All right. In chapter 10, Brendan comes over much too early in the morning to put locks on Piper and Hannah's doors to keep them safe while he's gone. <sighs> he also brings over takeout menu options and not because of her lack of cooking skills. However, as soon as he steps into her apartment, he notices her lack of clothing and can't seem to focus. <sighs> But I can't, I was, the noise is coming out of me. Piper and Brendan exchange some flirty, slightly mean banter. Mm -hmm. And before he knows it, Brendan is giving Piper his number. Piper quickly realizes how uncomfortable this is for him and doesn't mind pushing this discomfort a bit further. In a flirty way, of course. I love this scene so much. Like, it makes me so giggly. Like, there's nothing... <laughs> this sounds horrible, but there's nothing more that I, than I love than reading people's discomfort in flirty situations. <laughs> like, it just makes me laugh. Yeah. I really liked it. <laughs> I was surprised that ben Brendan was going to go over to their apartment and help out. Mm -hmm. I will say it was kind of like unbelievable for me that like piper was like in nothing except like a t-shirt and like her underwear or whatever and then she like only used a pillow to like cover her up i was like come on really <laughs> she's like you <laughs> had time to put yes, on some pants uh, like what are you doing <laughs> <laughs> no i feel like it's like <laughs> You're right. There was literally no reason for that to happen. I was like, I know, None. I know it's literally a studio. You can go to your dresser and grab some sweatpants or something. Real quick. Yeah. Like it would have <laughs> But that wouldn't have done anything interesting for the plot. You're now right. would it have? You're right, you're right. <laughs> The one thing I do love about this chapter is the attention it gives to how Piper feels so different around Brendan than she does around other men. Mm -hmm. um, and I feel like that's described so well, especially when his attention is on her. She describes herself as feeling very fidgety and stuff, and she's never like that. Yeah. So I love already that it sets this relationship up as something totally different than what she's used to it's for both of them too because it's like brendan he's getting all of these feelings that he's <laughs> never felt before and i love yes. it so much like it's i know me too it like their relationship is so electric and like tessa yes. bailey does such a good job to like display how electric it is for both of them oh that's a perfect way to put it you're so right <laughs> <laughs> you're so right one thing I also love about romance books is when they describe the way people smell mm -hmm. because like people don't even realize that but like even in real life when a guy smells good you notice mm -hmm. you know what I mean and so like I love when they make that a very like specific thing in books yeah. and I love that after she smells him she's like friends she reminded herself like she had to remind herself like they're friends yes. they're friends they're friends like oh I love uh, it uh, uh. um <laughs> And then the way <laughs> the way that he gives her mixed number and he's like, oh, you you should just take mine, too, just in case. We're all <laughs> and she knows exactly yeah. what he's doing and she just plays along and it just makes her like smitten. And it's just so cute. I will say I was like, <laughs> that was pretty smooth from Brendan, who hasn't gone on a date in like seven years. I was like, that's pretty good, dude. I'll give you that one. It was so smooth, except it also wasn't smooth because you knew what he was doing so yeah. much. But, like, it totally was smooth. Like, he knew what he was doing. Yeah, it was cute, though. It was very cute. Oh, I love that. And then this is what I mean when, like, she knows how to make him uncomfortable. Like, she when she starts, when she jokes with him about nudes. Yes. <laughs> and, and she knew exactly how he was going to react. Yeah. Like, it's so funny. Um, And then she's like, Brendan, are we friends? And he's like, no. And I love that because it totally sets off, like, so many conversations they have later in the book. Oh, like, yeah. He refute like, they are never friends. Yeah. They're never friends. Even if he's not willing to admit what they are or, like, what he feels, they're not friends. I know. And I love it. <laughs> <laughs> but that's all I have for chapter 10. Sweet. Okay, on to chapter 11. 
set out to sea to fish with his crew, we find Brendan downloading Instagram and looking up Viper's <laughs> oh, Instagram no. profile. His crew teases no. him, but eventually <laughs> shows the captain the ropes to social media. He accidentally <laughs> follows Piper on Instagram, <gasps> and the chapter ends with him realizing just how out of his league that Piper is. This chapter was so funny. So, but I could not <laughs> stop laughing. Like, <laughs> ridiculous. It gives me hives. <laughs> like, I was like, oh, that's so awkward. Like, I could not handle myself, but it was so funny you're so right yes dude. at this point i realized <laughs> that he would he had it bad for piper like this man downloading instagram like sir you have it so bad so Literally. so bad that you can't even like last a weekend without her i know i also love that his crew members were giving him shit and giving him like yes. ridiculous names for the usernames <laughs> yeah. yeah like because again everyone in brendan's <laughs> life just likes to make him yeah. more uncomfortable than he already is yeah. it's so funny i love it <laughs> and the last thing that i'll note about this chapter is that i really do like that tessa bailey took the time to have like brendan realize that he's like way over his head about piper mm -hmm. and just how out of his league she is for him mm -hmm. and that made the romance realistic to me just because they come from like such opposite worlds but i love that he was he was just like trying and just like mm -hmm really kind of diving head first into like his feelings for Piper, even though he might not have like stated it outright. 100%. I agree with you too. And I like that he almost, I, I love that he saw her on Instagram because I also kind of set up like the statements that she's made in the past about men or how yeah. she, like how she feels in a room and then how she presents herself on Instagram. So again, another clue to how she's almost like two different people, yes. which I think was important too. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, that's the end of the fun chapter 11. So on to chapter 12. Why? Why is she the only person he follows? Sorry. OK, go on. Okay. <laughs> All right. So chapter 12. Piper and Hannah go to the winery where they realize that Brendan has followed Piper on Instagram. <laughs> We also get background on Hannah's relationship with Fox, one of Brendan's crew members, and how he's a ladies' man. Um, on their way back, Abe is outside their apartment to add padding to the top bunk of uh, to the top bunk so Piper doesn't hit her head anymore. Of course, Abe was sent by Brendan. Abe reminds Piper of Opal, and she goes to visit the woman. Upon arrival, Piper realizes that Opal is her grandmother, who is Henry's father, Henry's mother. She shows Piper pictures of her father on his boat, and for the first time since arriving in Westport, Piper begins to tear up about reconnecting with her father. The chapter ends with Piper and Hannah agreeing to clean and fix up the bar for a grand reopening. This one was a big chapter. It was a big chapter, yeah. for sure. Okay, I cackled when I saw... Piper realized that Brendan had followed her, but he like didn't have any posts, no pictures, no followers. <laughs> like the secondhand embarrassment is crazy. And it's funny too because she like has millions of followers, and here's just like Brendan. <laughs> like there he is. <laughs> no posts, no yeah. profile no, picture, nothing. no nothing. Literally nothing. Zero. That's so creepy. I know, but so funny. It's, oh my god. I think it would be creepy if I like didn't know who he was, but because yes. we know Brendan and we were in his head, I yes. I like knew it, knew what was happening, and I just thought it was freaking hilarious. So freaking funny, dude. My heart swooned when I realized that Brendan had sent Abe over to fix no. the bu bunk. Like I was just like, sir, please. <laughs> he is the most thoughtful man. I know. Okay. I know. Yeah. Also, so random, but I love that Piper offered to walk Abe to the harbor because that's what he does mm -hmm. like every Friday or whatever. Again, this is like showing sides of her that made me like her more versus that versus like seeing her as shallow or that we were being told that people saw her as shallow. Mm -hmm. But she's like doing all these other things with Opal as well, which we'll get to just showing that she like really cares. And I, I found myself really, really liking Piper. No, me too. Um, I think that it shows like the kindness of her heart, especially yes. with um, 
opal and i will say i don't know if you're gonna get to this mm -hmm. i'm sure you will i just love that her connection to her dad is through another human because yeah. obviously she didn't have that opportunity with her mom because her yeah. mom just doesn't say anything so the fact that she kind of finds her information about her dad yeah. with her grandma i really like that yeah same getting to opal i again i did really like that she was reconnecting with opal her grandmother but I found that whole scene to be like a little cringe for me. I don't know mm. why. I just like mm -hmm. couldn't get through or I couldn't like comprehend like Piper doing Opal's hair and telling each other to like go out like they were friends. Like this is your grandmother, which like <laughs> maybe maybe like Opal is like a younger grandmother, which is like cool. But just the way the dialogue was happening, I was like, I can't. I can't get on. I like, can't get on board. No, 100%. I imagine telling my yaya to go out and get it, girl, and I want to die. Like, that would never. My yaya would be like, what you say? Like, why would you say? Yeah, like, where are we going? Why are we going? Literally, she would never. So I feel like this is a theme with this book. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the scenes are just really hard to buy into. Yeah. But I love it nonetheless. But I'm like, that's yeah. a far reach. A really but far we'll reach. we'll roll with it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. Maureen needs to get her shit together. She, Who's Maureen? Her freaking mom. Piper and oh, Hannah's yeah. mom. I, I don't know why, but like she always annoyed me throughout this entire book and like I'm angry that, like, we never got her side of the story either. Mm -hmm. Like, why did she never return? Why did she leave in the first place? Why didn't she yes. ever tell Piper and Hannah of their dad? Like, it just, like, made me sour mm -hmm. that, like, her their mother deprived Hannah and Piper of their father. And then Maureen has the freaking audacity to be like, well, I called Opal and she didn't pick up and blah, 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 blah. Like Maureen, you need to sit down and shut literally, up. Literally. I was, literally, you've done nothing. They, yeah. uh, they really made us hate Maureen, which I don't think we were supposed no. to necessarily, but I did not I, like her. Me neither. I hated her. <laughs> Last thing. Just I, like Mick. <laughs> <laughs> last thing i will say is that i love that they decided to like clean up the bar and have a reopening of it i didn't no. see that coming like i didn't see that be a part of the plot but i really really loved it and it gave piper and hannah like a lot of direction and also a chance to reconnect with their father which i really loved no, I totally agree, too, because, again, like we were talking about earlier, it was a bit of far reach that Daniel's like, go to West Part and reconnect yeah. and figure it out, like as if that made sense. But then I like that they decided to do the bar themselves. Yeah. So then truly, when it comes to fruition, it can be theirs. Yes. Like it's not Daniel telling them to do it. It's not anyone doing anything. It's all them. Yeah. Which I really liked. Yes. Well, that is the end of Chapter 12. Alrighty, we will jump right into chapter 13. <laughs> chapter 13 is a very important chapter for Brendan and Piper. The chapter begins with Brendan arriving back from his fishing trip on the day of his wife dying seven years ago. And of course, Mick has a party to celebrate her life. <laughs> However, as Brendan arrives back at shore, he starts recognizing that he couldn't get Piper out of his head and all he could do was think about her. Then the party begins and Fox expresses how unfair the party is to Brendan, even if Brendan isn't fully ready to admit that to himself. Next, Piper bursts into the party in an inappropriate way without her realizing it and makes a quick exit after feeling completely ashamed. As Brendan races out after her, he quickly finds himself comforting Piper very closely, which leads to them opening up up about their past relationships and current predicaments. They both feel chemistry, but now is not the time for them to admit it. However, after bringing Piper home, Brendan is finally ready to take off his wedding ring and start a new chapter of his life with more spontaneity and maybe someone new alongside him. I love this chapter. Mm -hmm. So much happens, though, I feel like. Yeah. And this, to me, did so much for the plot. I do like that right away we get to how he's missing Piper and he couldn't get it out of his head and mm -hmm. he's starting to admit it more and more to himself, which I love. <laughs> um, and I love that he talks about how he, like he hates changing his routines, but like how Piper makes him want to change his mm -hmm. routine. And like he usually, when he's on the water, that's all he can think about. But the fact that he's thinking about Piper while he's on the water signals, I think that, okay, this might be the real deal. Yeah. You know? Yeah. 
okay <laughs> so i wrote a note brendan is so dirty page 130 and they haven't done anything yet lol let me see what i'm talking okay about. okay <laughs> Again, Brenton really just lets his mind wander to wherever he wants it to go. He says, he thought of her body, thought of it to the point of distraction, how soft she'd be beneath him, how high maintenance she'd probably be in the sack, and how he'd deliver again and again until she wrecked his back with her fingernails. Like, what the frick? <laughs> you, you literally just decided you liked her. Yeah. And now you're talking about her ripping up your back with her fingernails. Like, how did this, how did you get from point A to point B? Sir, I'm not saying I'm not here for it, but yeah. like it's been a week calm down <laughs> it's been a week oh my god brendan is not ashamed to say things. yeah even if it's his inner dialogue he <laughs> just says it yeah okay i also will say i really like how tessa bailey writes about the conflict he feels with his wife he wants to respect the family but he also wants to move on and i think that like push and pull is really important for his character but i also think it says a lot about like who he is in the sense that like he just want like he wants to care for people in his own way right like yeah. he wants to make people happy in his own way um but i'm sorry having like a memorial party seven years after her death is really 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 weird it is and expecting brendan to be there and I relive know. it and just like it's too much it's yeah. too much and i like that um fox has brendan's back with how weird it is yep yeah, Fox knows what's up. <laughs> mm -hmm. He does, he does. Another scene where I died of secondhand embarrassment. When she comes in and she's like, Let this, let's get this party started. Mm -hmm. And then she notices it's a memorial. I died. But like not in a way like of the Instagram follow, yeah. like a giddy embarrassment. Like I felt so sad for her. Yeah. Because again, she has such a kind heart. Yeah. She would never want to disrespect anyone. Mm -hmm. And it's their fault for not telling her. Otherwise, she would have never done that. Yeah, exactly. Again, going back to fucking Mick, <laughs> blindsiding her. Like, <sighs> what, what do you expect when you say, oh, Friday night, we're going to get together at the bar? Like, yeah. Friday night, yeah, we're going to go have fun. I guess not. It's a memorial. Literally. <laughs> like, freaking Mick. Yeah. He ruins everything. He Truly, what the hell? Okay. Then Brendan, of course, can't help himself but follow after her. And I just, I'm not going to go too much into the details of this scene, but I just love that, like, she really, like, the way he comforts her mm -hmm. and he talks about how he's like, well, I should have dried her tears by now. So what else yeah. can I do to like get her to stop crying? I just want her to be okay. And I love that when she calls herself an airhead, he automatically wants to put that thought out of her mind. Like he just wants to like right away have Piper recognize how much more there is to her. A part of me when I was reading this scene, it was a little hard for me to believe Brendan because yeah. that's such a 180 like spin for him. Mm -hmm. But I will say... Knowing that we get his like inner monologue and his thoughts, I I could believe it eventually by the end of the mm -hmm. chapter because it's like, OK, I he recognizes that like, you know what Hannah said in the street of like she doesn't need like any other like garbage men treating her badly, whatever. We know mm -hmm. that he's been thinking about that. Mm -hmm. So part of me was like, OK, OK, I I guess I can get on board with him being like nicer now. Mm hmm. 100%. But again, one of those scenes where I'm like, that was a bit of a stretch, yes. but we'll take yeah. it. <laughs> okay. And then, of course, after they're done with the serious talk, they have a moment where they stare too long. And Brendan's like, no, this isn't going to be the time that we kiss. And then he brings up the Instagram follow thing, which I was like, oh. Is that any better? <laughs> <laughs> no, I know. Um, <laughs> and I just I, like it was so awkward, but also I'd rather have him bring him up, bring it up than like never talk about it. Yeah, you know? like, like address the know. elephant in the room. So I mean, like, whatever. And then, OK, um. another really cute moment is like when he's like, oh, yeah, that lipstick purse. And she's like, well, I love that purse. And he's like, well, I wouldn't burn it then. And she's like, and I just oh, it's so cute. Like, he, <laughs> I don't know why that stupid lipstick first made me giddy, but I was just like, oh, he wouldn't burn it because she likes it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and then, of course, again, Piper brings up the friend thing. And again, he's like, nope, not a friend. And I just, oh, I love it. It's interesting 
about this whole friend thing because it's like i think from piper's perspective she's like oh i just want to be your friend and brendan's perspective is like i don't even want you as a friend i want to sleep with you and have something more so it's like (laughs) already they're like on different pages which we'll get to later but it's just interesting how fast brendan's mind can go and piper's just like i just want to be friends he, he flipped his switch very, very fast. Yes, yeah. But I do think this was in a very important moment for them in that it caused Brendan to finally take off his wedding ring. Yes. Which was obviously very, very, very significant. I, in a way, felt very proud of him because it's been seven years and that's very, mm-hmm. very hard. But also, it was kind of sad. Like, you've been kind of wallowing around for seven years, dude. Seven years is not, not short. It is very mm-hmm. long. So I was like... So- you know, he deserves this. He deserves to move on, even as sad it, as it is. But, like, the future is looking bright, especially with Piper, you know? 100%. And I will say, even in real life, I've said this to my friends before, sometimes I don't think you'll fully be over someone that you broke up with mm-hmm. or are not with anymore for whatever reason until you meet someone who shows you different. Not in every case, but mm-hmm. I think sometimes meeting someone who shows you how things can be different is kind of the push you need to like move on from that. Yes, exactly. And that was the exact case for brendan yeah if that's it i'm just gonna jump into chapter 14. Mm -hmm. chapter 14 is a doozy to put it lately (laughs) it begins with hannah and piper working on the bar renovations when brendan brings them coffee and donuts piper can't thank him enough but they end up in a staring contest that is anything but innocent then brendan shows the ladies an outdoor area and gives them a whole new vision for an outdoor bar space of course brendan offers to help them renovate it he holds to this promise because the next day him and his friends are are around and working on the outdoor area during this work day the people plot to get brendan to take his first instagram picture <laughs> which turns into a rather flirtatious event then why the way i write these i'm either like oh yeah they had sex and they did blah 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 or i'm like a rather flirtatious event <laughs> like there's no in between like what the heck the next <laughs> the, the next day the outdoor area is finished and brendan and piper have a moment alone which leads to them having their spicy first kiss and an invite to dinner this chapter was like (gasps) yeah like i just felt like so much was happening you know um okay the way that he talks is so sexy (laughs) like the way that she describes it as a raspy baritone Mm -hmm. i was like i don't know what that means but i know that it's hot yeah you know it's sexy it's sexy (laughs) it is i love the inner dialogue piper has about brendan saying piper i don't just go putting my arms around girls like is she just like uh, she starts to like really realize like oh this is what's happening here when she notices brendan like taking note of how she takes her coffee swoon like it's the little details like can i just can i just say that yes Brendan is such an acts of service guy and as an yes. acts of service love language for me mm-hmm. uh, like he is the hottest thing ever in the world <laughs> like I was just dying over this chapter because I was like oh my god he's like taking note of her coffee he's helping them re- re- like make the bar pretty and all this stuff and doing the mm-hmm. outdoor space I was like oh my god like he loves yeah. her like what he literally like? loves her what the heck yeah <laughs> I loved it personally, too, because I was like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> no, it is a swoon. It is a, sw- a swoon. It is a singular swoon. <laughs> Anyways, I love this quote. It says, and then she knew by the determined set of his jaw and his confident energy that Brent- Brendan Tegger did not think of her as a friend. Like, he, he, he. Th- and that's right after she notices the ring was gone. Yes, so she, yeah. this is when I think it flips for her, yeah. where she's like, okay, I'm starting to really think of him. Or like letting myself really think of him as more. Yes. Like we said earlier, Hannah truly does not give a crap what she says. Like when they're staring and she like juts in like it's no like she she just doesn't care. She's like, if I see something, I'm going to say something, you know, (laughs) again, these little moments where I'm like swoon when going to the outdoor space, Brendan just takes one hand and rips the wood out of the wall. 
like that strength that's so attractive what the heck what? yes tessa bailey what are you expecting me to do <laughs> like i was like oh my god he ripped the wood out of the wall oh my god <laughs> like, like it's so hot like, for no reason like brendan is like so manly in like the stereo yes. stereotypical way but it's like so attractive that i'm yes. like oh my god <laughs> and for those of you who has seen Shit's Creek? Obviously, this is based yeah. off of Mutt. She, but she took Mutt to another level because yes. Mutt to me was so annoying in the show. Like his voice was too high. Oh, really? I didn't get the manly vibe from him that I wanted. I okay, I got the manly vibe from Mutt at the beginning, but then it kind of tapered off because then I realized he was just like a cute little sweetheart. But that, yeah. but he wasn't like manly, manly, you know. Yeah. <laughs> No, Brendan's way better. <laughs> <laughs> and then when Piper admits the courting is working, I loved it. Because yeah. like Hannah's like, oh, she's he's courting you. And yeah. it's just like the way ugh, it's so old fashioned. My heart is like, ah, I love that. But Brendan we courted. But Brendan is so old fashioned though, too. So I that's know. why it's like so sweet and like I know. And Piper has never had this happen to her ever. So I mean no. she's like slept off her feet too. So I'm just like mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> of course, the whole Instagram picture scene mm -hmm. happens. I love this. And it's not just Piper trying to get him. Of course, again, everyone joins in to make him <laughs> as uncomfortable <laughs> as, <laughs> as possible. Yeah. Brendan says, maybe we don't have the same idea of fun. And then Piper says, no, I can think of a few things we'd both enjoy. <laughs> I was like, damn, that kind of came out of nowhere. But yeah. I was like, shoo, I like this. Yeah. I like this. <laughs> when Hannah said big tools, yay symbolism, I died laughing <laughs> like a girl. When Brendan says, I know they don't require a picture to keep your account active. This was about making you smile, not me. Worth it. How many times can he make me swoon in one chapter? Like, I can't handle it. It's like... It. Uh, it's just like the sweetest thing ever it's like uh -huh. everything that like a girl wants of just like he's just such a gentleman like oh i know oh my god <laughs> literally love <Yeah>. it <laughs> Something outside of the romance of this chapter mm -hmm. that I love. I love that we have some inner dialogue from Piper about how she like takes pride in doing the hard work for the bar. Yeah. I think it just shows her character development a little bit. So just wanted to point that out. And then, okay, here's where I start freaking out. You think I've started freaking out? I have not started freaking out. So then he says, are you ready? And she goes, ready for what? For me to ask you to dinner yet? Like what? Okay. If someone asked me to dinner like yeah. that, I would faint. I, w I, I would faint. Screamed when <laughs> that happened because I was like, "Are you are you ready for what? Like a kiss? Like what is he asking?" Yeah. He, and then he was like, "Oh, if I can like take you to dinner." I was like, "What?" <laughs> I literally love it so much. Oh, my God. <sighs> okay, the one thing I will say is that Piper is very honest from the very start that she's leaving back for LA and she has yes. all these plans. Like, mm -hmm. I respect that a lot about her. Not everyone gives that forewarning. Yep. And obviously, Brendan is still determined as all hell for it to whatever. But I appreciate that Piper was very straightforward about that at first. I just got to put that out there. Yep. <sighs> but then their first kiss, I died <laughs> like the way she just is like oh brendan and then he drops the toolbox and like grabs her and yeah. like oh, and like picks her up i was like holy and then in quotes it says in piper's inner inner dialogue it says oh god he just devoured her and then and then when he moaned it's described as this huge gritty badass of a man moaned like he'd never tasted anything so good in all his life like what <laughs> yeah like i feel like their first kiss was like straight out of a movie like uh -huh. literally like literally i was shook at <laughs> i was shook i i was shook at too i didn't think it was gonna happen me neither either. no and definitely not like mm -mm. that i'll take it down <laughs> and then of course hannah walks in yeah. and it's so funny and then she's like oh i have a date and hannah's like all right that means it's time to get ready and then of course it's like 24 hours from now but that is the end of chapter 14 oh wow. love it 
Wow. Yeah, those two chapters are really big. I wow. know. Randomly, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. On to chapter 15. Yes, ma'am. Brendan and Piper have their first date at Brendan's house, <laughs> and he's super nervous about going on a date for the first time since his wife passed. He shows Piper his garden, and they talk about how Brendan loves Westport and how Piper's mother warned her about men and the sea. My first note, it says, read, par- read paragraph on page 168. <gasps> So. I love the excerpts. I really? live for them. Okay, so basically this is when I think he's picking Piper up. Okay, so... In the car. Yes, in the car. It says... It, <laughs> it wasn't... <laughs> <He> said, <laughs> Sorry. I hate myself. It okay. says, it wasn't the first time he had seen her dress to kill a man, so he shouldn't have been surprised when she answered with a flirty smile and smelling exotic, like smoke, in a dress so short he had... He had seen everything if he went down two steps. He almost swallowed his fucking tongue. (laughs) Again, this man is like head over heels for her. Once he admitted that he liked her, it's like, all right, I'm all in. Like zero zero to a hundred immediately. I love that he has a garden. I know. He he, he, little soft boy. I know he also said like it wasn't the sexiest thing, blah, blah, but like. Your garden is so cute. It's like, yeah, I love it. I love it. I know, me too. It's the details. Really? Okay, sorry. Another snippet, page 170. (laughs) I'm ready. Okay. It's when they get to Brendan's house and he is helping Piper out of the car. And she says, thank you. She whispered, running a finger down the center of his chest. Such a gentleman. That's right. He tipped her chin up. That's exactly what I'm going to be, Piper. Her bravado slipped a little. I guess we'll see about that. I guess we will. (laughs) Okay. (gasps) I screamed. I screamed when I read this for the first time. They are so bold. Yes. They are so bold. Both of them. I'm like, yeah. holy crap. I know. I was like, I was like, oh, so this is how it's going to go. Like, this is what mm-hmm. is the precedent for their date. But I loved it. Other than that, there's like nothing like major or big in this chapter. I just wanted mm-hmm. to say that I thought Brendan's inner turmoil was interesting because I think he was saying that it's like just a fling for her, which mm. definitely makes sense, right? Because in the previous chapter, we saw that Piper was like, hey, I'm going back to L.A. But yep. I thought it was interesting because he was so dead set on getting mm. her to be his. But then he never thought through the technicalities of it, which we'll get to later. But mm-hmm. it was just interesting, again, that they're, they were kind of on like different pages. But I think... Again, it kind of makes sense. And I I actually kind of related to the inner turmoil because sometimes you end up really, really liking or vibing with someone where like realistically it doesn't make a lot of sense. But yeah. you're like, OK, but I still want to make it work yeah. with the time that I have. But like so I, I kind of understood. Yeah, it, honestly, definitely. All right. Well, that is all that I have for 15. So I'm going to jump in to 16. <laughs> <Your smile. laughs> Because it, it's going to get real spicy in here. (laughs) Oh my god. Piper and Brendan eat dinner. He cooked her fish, of course. Piper tells him of her lack of work ethic, and Brendan tells her of his sailing future and what he wants to do with the Delaray. Then, Piper has inner turmoil about what exactly she wants to do and be with Brendan, stuck between him and returning back to LA and her life. Eventually, Piper decides that she can have Brendan for tonight and still keep her eye on reality, and then things get pretty hot. (laughs) I'd say. (laughs) Why did I say that like a dude? I said, I'd say. (laughs) Okay. I have so many notes for this chapter. So just buckle up. I'm buckled. The fact that. What the fuck? (laughs) I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. (laughs) Why do I say things? I I should just stop talking. I'm so fucking weird. Okay. Okay. Oh my god. First thing I will say, I love that he bought her champagne and he bought her like the most <gasps> expensive one. Again, he's like such an acts of service guy and I'm like mm-hmm. swooning over here because that is I my love, love language and like I'm absolutely in love. Their conversation is like super cute and real. I don't have like any big comments on it, but I did like the pacing of it and it felt mm-hmm. 
real and forced, not forced and just like natural, which mm-hmm. made the relationship 100%. more believable to me. So that's what I really, really liked. Like I think Tessa Bailey did a good job of like pacing that really well. 100%. I think it brings it back down to earth with like how almost pushy it was or like the 180 we talked about with um, yeah. Brendan. I felt like it brought it back down to like a normal level yes, again. Definitely. Okay. So on the bottom of page 184, when Piper drinks the champagne and kisses him and goes, told you I'd get you to try it. Want more? <laughs> I screamed. I, I was like, holy crap. I was like, you guys have kissed once yeah. and she's already like being. All, I was like, oh, I know. Holy crap. And I was like, oh, this this is how it's going to go. I was like, yeah. OK, OK, I'm ready. Like it was just crazy just kind of how quickly they like snapped into it so listeners if you listen to our podcast episode that we recorded in boston you generally know our stance on nicknames i'm usually okay with them but i hated when brenton called piper baby during the spicy scenes i can't (laughs) oh my god the egg i got (laughs) like i couldn't theoni and i'm usually okay with nicknames I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. Selena, when I tell you I passed away and did not come back again, I died when he called her baby. Okay, now we can finally dig in. I don't know if you have any quotes, but like he loves dirty talk. Our boy Brandon loves dirty talk and I hate it. Well, I hate how he does it, okay? Because he's like... I just need you so bad, bitch. Like, like, <laughs> like I, I hate it. it. I can't, can't even, even say it. it. <laughs> I hate it. Like, like what the I don't heck? know. It just like it didn't feel natural to me, and it it was too much for me that it snapped me out of the moment where I was like, I can't, I can't go. I, ugh, I, I can't. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> on top of page one eighty six. When, okay, I did really like this part, though, because I thought it was funny. When he was like, no, Piper, I'm a this ass man. Yeah, I, I knew you died. were going to quote that. <laughs> I knew you were going to quote that. As soon as I read that, I was like, Selena's going to quote that and she's going to freaking love it. I loved it, too. <laughs> Me, too. I thought it was hilarious. Mm-hmm. So hilarious, but also such like a Brendan thing to say, too. Yeah. So I was like, oh, my God, I'm obsessed literally obsessed it was so fitting page 188 what did he page 188 say? when piper's like anywhere you want captain and brendan goes fuck i died because i i just know that brendan loves her calling him captain like that that's like such a kink between them but then again going back to the <laughs> ick of like <laughs> nicknames and dirty talk i was like mm, i'm not sure (laughs) it is such a king he loves being called captain he loves that shit yeah i for one do not love it (laughs) i was like (sighs) and i'm i'm glad they're compatible in that sense but no yeah absolutely again like the dirty talk was just like 50 50 for me so that one i was okay with just because like knowing that like he's technically a captain and whatever i was like whatever i don't care i don't selena's like logically that Logi- makes sense logically it's okay for dirty talk <laughs> but yeah really 50 50 for me on this dirty talk during all the spicy scenes the intro chapter that we got for brendan in chapter four Mm-hmm. immediately i already knew he was ripped as hell but i mm-hmm. thought it was so funny to see piper's reaction to him at the bottom of 188 when he like took his shirt off and he's just like ripped and i was like yeah why is he so hot why is he so hot <laughs> of course he's so hot yes. he was jack yes he was jacked. i love that though like oh my god Thank he's you. so attractive <laughs> love it. My note says here, top of page 193, read Brendan's dialogue. Oh, oh, okay. Oh, God, okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Are you ready? Oh, God, I'm are scared. No, I'm going to throw up, aren't I? <laughs> yes, you are. <laughs> I'm sorry. I can't even read it. Okay. Oh, okay. Are you ready? Okay. No. 
Oh gosh, okay, please bear with me. <laughs> I feel I feel like so embarrassed to even like say. <laughs> okay. 193, this is Brendan's dialogue. He said, Oh my god, oh my god. One day soon, Piper, I'm going to F you so goddamn hard. Going to F the word friend right out of your beautiful mouth. You'll forget how to say anything but my name. Real quick, honey. And then Piper whispers in his ear and says, promise. Okay, one, I guess really loudly because the whole friend thing came back. And I was like, he did not just say that. Like, oh my gosh. Another part of me was like, oh God, was that necessary? <laughs> Like, that's so over the top. Can I answer your question? <laughs> it was not necessary. Yeah. That was so un... I'm gonna F this and I'm gonna... Yeah. Like, shut the heck up, <laughs> Brendan. What the hell? If, can you imagine? <laughs> like, if someone ever said something like that to me, I would be out of that moment. I wouldn't say yeah. promise. I'd be like, I'm out. Like, <laughs> like, don't say that. The heck? Oh my gosh, yeah. Like, it was just... It was a lot. That dirty talk did not do it for me. I was like, no, nope, no, thank you. No, thank you. Um, another question, though. Why mm -hmm. did they just have sex right there? Like, I don't remember. They were, like, already, like, half naked. And, like, they were already so close to it. It, like, might as well just, like, do it. I don't, I don't understand. I don't remember why either. I know there was some reason, but I don't know why. Yeah. I just thought that was weird because I was like, you guys are already so far, but whatever. Literally. At that point. I will say in this chapter, I really did like Piper's inner dialogue. I think <laughs> Tessa Bailey does a really great job. Switching. Sw switching. Switching from <laughs> the spicy scenes, going back to character <laughs> development. I think this is the first time that we really get to see Piper realize that she really does like Brendan. Yes. And like that her plan of hers to like go back to LA and live her own life like it's it's not as easy as she thinks anymore and I really mm -hmm. like that complex situation okay oh my god okay oh it's not time. <laughs> <laughs> why did he give her a spare key it doesn't make sense god, come that on was so weird like, okay I knew he was from a small town but the thing is that like if a guy ever gave me a spare key to his house after a week of doing stuff, immediately That was our no. first date. Exactly. Like, an ick, no. Uh-uh. That's a huge ick for me. His reasoning behind it was, like, fine. Like, it was believable enough where I was like, okay, fine, Brendan. Like, it shows that you're caring and blah, 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 blah. But still, mm -hmm. like, the factor, like, the, the actual action of him giving his keys to her, I was like, no. Yeah, it's a no from me, yeah. dog. That, <laughs> yeah. that was too much. Exactly. It was too much. Last thing that I will say about this chapter is that <laughs> <laughs> I love that she said, be careful to him at the end. I love that too. Yeah. And I think it brings back the warning that her mom yeah. gave her about fishermen and just like everything she's heard about them and knowing what happened, just like that Brendan's wife died yeah. and just like, and, and it's so uh, to me, that was Piper admitting that, like, she really, really cared about him, like you said, yeah. with her character development. So I really like that Me too. too. I thought that was, like, a great way to end the chapter, the crazy Agreed. chapter. But, yeah, I loved it so much. <laughs> but, yeah, that is the end of chapter 16, and that is the end of this episode as well, part one. This book is nuts. It's, yeah. like, there's so many times when I'm, like, this makes no sense, yeah. But like, I still love it. Yeah. It's like a very weird thing. Um, But I think that's what I love about contemporary romances. Sometimes yeah. they don't have to make total no. sense. Like it doesn't have to be realistic. It's just like, it's just fun. And it's like cute. And I love that about it. Exactly. Um, So I'm very excited to discuss part two next week. Um, So you guys will have to tune in and we'll see you then. Bye. Bye.